Now we are going to look at the last functional entity in detail with respect to different underlying networks which it supports. The transport resource control functional entity that at the end of the day manages QS control, whichever QS policy is coming right from the service control function. So we'd look at its role and then we'd look at the operation under different network type settings. So we all know that uh, NGN is pretty much access independent. So the access technologies uh, can vary. They are all interoperable in an integrated NGN architecture. They can uh, uh, coexist as such there is no problem. But when we are talking about providing quality of service and the quality of service control, uh, the role of uh, uh, the, uh, the transport resource control functional entity becomes very important. It is one of the functional entities in the uh, resource and admission control functions. Uh, it is dependent upon the underlying technology because uh, each technology has its own peculiar uh, behavior, its own uh, protocol design, and uh, its own definition of the parameters. So for different networks such as the IP networks and if uh, the multi-protocol label switching is enabled, the IP MPLS networks, uh, pure Ethernet network as layer 2 technology and broadband and wireless uh, uh, mobile networks including both uh, WiMAX and uh, the LTE and LTEA. So this TRCFE is going to have a very important role in, uh, in assessing the attributes, the features, the protocols of the uh, access technologies. So uh, when we are talking about admission control, admission control is dependent upon the availability of existing resources um, in the network and the requirement which is coming in a certain uh, QoS request for, for a flow. Uh, particularly for media flow. So to understand the current um, uh, state of the network, uh, there is uh, uh, something known as the management for performance measurement. We will talk about it later, but just consider it for now. It is again a function uh, that is uh, uh, used to assess the current state of network parameters in uh, order to make sure that QoS uh, requirements are um, amicably met. So this uh, MPM is used by the TRCFE uh, to um, admit the service requests depending upon the uh, QoS profiles on the basis of the existing network performance. Uh, the existing network performance is uh, measured through collecting certain logs or information. For instance, the bandwidth availability, uh, the current measured QoS parameters such as uh, uh, latency, um, delay variation or jitter, packet loss ratio, etc. So admission control by TRCFE is dependent upon the information it gets from the management for performance measurement module. So if we are talking about uh, different underlying access technologies, we can start with IP. Um, so this TRC FE is uh, very useful in interacting with IP because IP uh, routing is implemented on routers through different uh, routing protocols such as R RIP, OSPF, etc. So the routers can implement uh, quality of service using uh, uh, the uh, IETF recommended diff serve architecture, so which which is based primarily on uh, uh, packet uh, classification uh, and differentiation um, and admission control. Uh, the packet differentiation is done either in IP version four or IP version six, depending upon uh, what is the uh, available header information available. In IP version four, it is the QS classes and uh, uh, in uh, IP version 6, it is the uh, traffic class field. So essentially, both of these come under the 
uh, DS, differentiated services fields. The other important attribute of uh, the diff serve architecture is the admission control. Since we are talking about the RSCF, the resource and admission control function, so this TRCFE uh, manages the uh, links or all the interfaces in our router uh, and then correspondingly it performs link by link uh, resource uh, management and the allocation of uh, uh, resources. Now this is uh, essentially meaning uh, buffer management and admitting a certain flow or denying a certain flow at the input of a router. So admission control is another important functionality carried out by the TRC FE for IP. Um, since we are talking about NGN networks with very high speed requirements, so the multi-protocol label switching is something that uh, makes the processing of IP packets very fast and uh, it does it, it does so by introducing uh, a header known as the shim header uh, between layer 2 and layer 3 uh, known as a label now uh, this label is uh, uh, used in processing the ip packet as it moves from a router to another router known as the mpls domain so the paths in uh, nm in, in an mpls domain are known as the label switched paths, which are pre-provisioned uh, for a certain flow. Uh, for instance, a VoIP flow or IPTV flow. So correspondingly, this MPLS domain results into uh, a virtual MPLS transport network. That is, uh, it exists on top of an IP network, but since it is using labels, so it is virtually existing. Uh, now these labels can be either uh, uh, assigned in the form of a preset forwarding table or a certain uh, real-time signaling protocol such as a resource reservation protocol, traffic engineering can be used or constrained label distribution protocol can be used. So whatever is used, MPLS uses essentially um, a stack of uh, labels such that the top of the stack is processed in the form of the uh, last in first out uh, manner. So a QS root is basically a label stack which comprises uh, uh, concatenated uh, uh, label switched paths or a series of uh, routers which are connected in a single path. Then we have the wireless uh, uh, fixed and mobile broadband. Uh, we have the examples of WiMAX and LTE, LTEA. Here again, uh, the uh, QS control is handled through the radio interface, uh, which is uh, layer 2. Uh, the QS signaling for QS control uh, is done in the uh, radio part. Uh, and uh, we already know certain QS classes which were defined by uh, the ITUT, uh, ITF, and the uh, NGN uh, community. So for these QS classes um, in wireless, the, uh, uh, the, the this uh, transport resource control functional element, functional entity can actually carry out some kind of priority based scheduling uh, at the base stations. Uh, it could be a base station in LTE, it, uh, it could be a base station in WiMAX. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, this TRCFE can also carry out some kind of runtime adaptive uh, bandwidth allocation uh, known as the dynamic bandwidth allocation. So uh, in all, uh, finally we can say that uh, the TRCFE is dependent upon the underlying technology and corresponding to that technology, it changes its uh, QS control uh, with whatever features are available in that technology.